We're going to be reading chapter 6 and 7 in our Frendel book today. Remember as we read that you need to think about parts of your book log that you want to fill in. You can make a connection, either uh, text to text, text to self, or text to world connections, and there's two connections. You have words that you hear that you don't know. You will you'll might have to rewind so that you can um, write down the sentence that they're from. And you'll look up the definition and write the definition in your own words. And then you have uh, where you draw a picture or a graphic organizer with details as what you read. So you're going to pick one of those sections to fill out today. So when we read last, we met our main character, Nick. And we read that he was sort of a, I guess like a little mischief, mischievous kid. He wasn't um, a really bad kid, but he wasn't the best kid in the world either. He's in fifth grade, and he has Miss Granger, who is notorious for giving them a lot of work and really making them study their words. And he tried to outsmart Miss Granger, and instead she ended up giving him a report to do, extra homework on top of the homework he already had. So chapter six is called The Big Idea. Three things happened later the same afternoon. Nick and Janet Fisk had missed the bus because of the school newspaper meeting, so they walked home together. They were seeing who could walk along the curb without falling. It took a lot of concentration. When, and when Janet stepped off into the street, Nick said, that's three points for me. But Janet said, I didn't fall. I saw something. Look. She bent down and picked up a gold ballpoint pen, the fancy kind. That was the first thing Jan That was the first thing Janet finding the pen. They got back on the curb, and Nick followed Janet, putting one foot carefully in front of the other on the narrow concrete curb. And while he stepped along, he thought back over the school day, especially about his report. And what Miss Granger had said about words at the end of the period finally sank in. That was the second thing, understanding what Miss Granger had said. She had said, who says dog means dog? You do, Nicholas. You do, Nicholas, he repeated to himself. I do, Nick thought, still putting one foot in front of the other, following Janet. What does that mean? And then Nick remembered something. When he was about two years old, his mom had bought him one of those unbreakable cassette players and a bunch of sing-along tapes. He had loved them, and he played them over and over and over and over. He would carry the tape and the player in to his mother or his big brother or his father and bang them together and say, Guagala, 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 until someone put the cassette in the machine and turned it on. And for three years, whenever he said guagala, his family knew that he wanted to hear those pretty sounds made from the voices and instruments. Then when Nick went to preschool, he learned that if he wanted his teacher and the other kids to understand him, he had to use the word music. But guagala meant the nice sound to Nick because Nick said so. Who says guagala means music? You do, Nicholas. So maybe you have a connection there. Has um, Maybe you've been around babies or younger brothers or sisters who have said words that don't sound like the word they are supposed to sound like, but you know what they mean. Maybe you could make that connection on your book log. No fair, yelled Janet. They were at the corner of their own street, and Nick had bumped into her, completely absorbed in his thoughts. Janet stumbled off the curb, and the gold pin in her hand clattered onto the street. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Honest, said Nick. I just wasn't watching. Here. Nick stood over, stooped over and picked up the pin and held it out to her. Here's your... And that's when the third thing happened. Nick didn't say pen. Instead, he said, here's your friendle. Friendle? Janet took her pen and looked at him like he was nuts. She wrinkled her nose and said, What's a friendle? Nick grinned and said, You'll find out. See you later. It was there at the corner of Spring Street and South Grand Avenue, one block from home on a September afternoon. That's when Nick got 
a big idea. Here's a picture of Nick handing Janet his friendle, or her friendle back, actually. And by the time he had run down the street and up the steps and through the door and upstairs to his room, it wasn't just a big idea. It was a plan. A whole plan just begging for Nick to put it into action. And action was Nick's middle name. The next day after school, the plan began. Nick walked into the Penny Pantry store and asked the lady behind the counter for a friendle. She squinted at him. A what? A friendle, please. A black one, said Nick. She leaned over closer and aimed one ear at him. You want a what? A friendle. And this time, Nick pointed at the ballpoint pens behind her on the shelf. A black one, please. The lady handed Nick the pen. He handed her 49 cents and said thank you and left the store. Six days later, Janet stood at the counter of the penny pantry. Same store, same lady. John had come in the day before, and Pete the day before that, and Chris the day before that, and Dave the day before that. Janet was the fifth kid that Nick had sent, sent there to ask the woman for a friendle. And when she asked, the lady reached right for the pins and said, blue or black? Nick was standing one aisle away at the candy racks, and he was grinning. Frindle was a real word. It meant pen. Who says Frindle means pen? You do, Nicholas. Half an hour later, a group of serious fifth graders had a meeting in Nick's playroom. It was John, Pete, Dave, Chris, and Janet. And Nick. And that's six kids. Six secret agents. They held up their right hands and read the oath Nick had written out. From this day on and forever, I will never use the word pen again. Instead, I will use the word friendle. And I will do everything possible so others will too. And all six of them signed the oath with Nick's friendle. The plan would work. Thanks, Miss Granger. All right, I'm reading six and seven. So this is chapter seven and it's called Word Wars. School was the perfect place to launch a new word. And since this was a major historical event, Nick wanted to begin in exactly the right class. Seventh period, language arts. Nick raised his hand first thing after the bell rang and said, Miss Granger, I forgot my friendle. Sitting three rows away, John blurted out, I have an extra one you can borrow, Nick. Then John made a big show of looking for something in his backpack. I think I have an extra friendle, I mean. I told my mom to get me three or four. I'm sure I had an extra friendle in here yesterday, but I must have taken it with. Oh, here it is. And then John made a big show of throwing it over to Nick, and Nick mixed it on purpose. Then he made a big show of finding it. Miss Granger and every kid in the class got the message, loud and clear. That black plastic thing that Nick borrowed from John had a funny name, a different name, a new name. Friendle. There was a lot of giggling, but Miss Granger turned up the power in her eyes and swept the room into silence. And the rest of the class went by according to plan. Her plan. As everyone was leaving after class, Miss Granger said, Nicholas, I'd like to have a word with you. And she emphasized the word, word. Nick's mouth felt dry and he gulped, but his mind stayed clear. He walked up to her desk. Yes, Miss Granger? It's a funny idea, Nicholas, but I will not have my class disrupted again. Is that clear? Her eyes were lit up, but it was mostly light, not much heat. Idea? What idea? asked Nicholas, as he tried to make his eyes blank as possible. You know what I mean, Nicholas. I'm talking about that performance that you and John gave at the start of class. I'm talking about this. And she held up her pen an old maroon fountain pen with a blue cap. But I really didn't have a friendle with me, said Nick, amazed at his own bravery. And hiding behind his glasses, Nick kept his eyes wide and blank. Miss Granger's eyes flashed and then narrowed and her lips formed a thin, hard line. She was quiet for a second. And then she said, I see, very well. Then I guess we have nothing more to discuss here, Nicholas. You may go. Thanks, Miss Granger, said Nick. And he grabbed his backpack and headed for the door. And when he was just stepping into the hallway, he said, And I promise, 
I won't ever forget my friend all again. Bye. That was chapter seven. Very short. That's why we read two chapters today. So you can summarize what you read. You can draw a picture um, about what you read or a graphic organizer putting in some details, maybe some words you don't know, or um, what's the other choice? Oh, any connections that you might have had. Um, make sure that you do one of those things on your book blog today.